Hi, this is Chris Putnam, co-author of Petrus Romanus and Exo Vaticana with Tom Horn. Uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, another issue uh, pertaining to the Exo Vaticana, um, the belief in extraterrestrials and uh, astrobiology, this new science that uh, has become quite popular. Um, astrobiology is driven by a scientific tenet known as the Copernican Principle. Now, Nicholas Copernicus is the, the early astronomer who kind of displaced the Earth as the center of the cosmos. Uh, he determined that the, the Earth actually rotates around the sun and that we have a solar system with all the planets rotating around the sun. Now, this, of course, uh, was taken up by Galileo, and Galileo ended up being put on house arrest by, because he insulted the Pope, really, in, in his book that uh, kind of advocated Copernicanism. Um, now, there's some really good reasons to understand why th this is true, and you know, most people accept that the Earth rotates around the sun these days. Uh, but one of the ideas that astronomers have extrapolated from this is that not only is the Earth not the center of the cosmos, that it's unremarkable. It's in a you know, an unremarkable position. It's just one of many. There's nothing special about it. Um, and so they've taken this idea of the Copernican principle and they've really kind of extended it. You know, not that the Earth is not just the center, but that the Earth is just nothing special. It, you know, its location is not special. Now, kind of to add insult to injury, they've extended the Copernican principle, which is really just about location in the universe, into what they call the principle of mediocrity or the mediocrity principle. Now, this goes quite a bit further, and it says that the Earth is just a mediocre planet and that life on Earth is just mediocre. There's nothing special about us as human beings. There's nothing special about the Earth. So it's not just location now. It's everything about us. Uh, even human life is not special because, I mean, they, they, they embrace Darwinism. They embrace what they call abiogenesis, which means that life just popped into being from non-life and, and we evolved. Uh, we like to say it's from the goo to you via the zoo, from the primordial soup. Um, so this is what they believe. There's nothing special about humanity. We're just an evolved primate. So this is the dominant scientific worldview. Now, when you extend the mediocrity principle out into the universe, this fact that they find finding all these new planets, all these new exoplanets, they kind of extrapolate the idea that, well, if we're nothing special, there's nothing special about the Earth, there's nothing special about humans, that all these other planets are just as likely to have evolved similar life and probably more advanced than us. So it's really an extension of this worldview issue. And it's really founded on the idea that there's nothing special about the Earth, there's nothing special about humans. So this is what drives the astrobiological project. And this is why it's really intellectually virtuous in most of our universities today to believe in extraterrestrials. Um, it's really, you're more of a heretic if you don't believe in extraterrestrials than if you do. It's kind of funny, you know. 50 years ago, people that believed in aliens were, were thought of to be nuts. Today, it's the people that don't believe in aliens who are thought of to be nuts. So this is really becoming uh, the sort of thing, if you want to be viewed in academic circles as respectable, then you really have to, 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 to believe in aliens, or at least in the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Um, I think that that is really driving this astrobiological project. And it, it's driving, I think, a lot of things that we uh, see coming together and what we think could be the great deception on Earth. Now, what about this great deception? Does that mean that alien spaceships are going to fly over the major cities? I mean, that's one possible scenario. I mean, that's, that's something that we can't write off as too fantastic. Um, there have been mass UFO sightings. Um, they're, they're documented. The, the case in Phoenix was seen by the governor of Arizona, Fife Symington. You know, thousands of people witnessed a huge mile-wide mile craft fly over the city of, city of Phoenix. Now, the governor of Arizona, Fife Symington, was an Air Force officer. He's not the kind of person that would misidentify, you know, just a regular military craft. And if you listen to his testimony, there, there's video clips of that, and he's written it out. 
he says that he, he's convinced that what he saw was not of this earth. Now, he doesn't know that it's not of this earth, but it's something that he had never seen before. So that is a live possibility for the way this could go down. But I'd like to suggest that it could be a lot more subtle when we see this worldview issue that I'm talking about. You know, when you start to believe in aliens and you start to believe that UFOs are aliens, um, you sort of accept all this baggage. You accept the worldview issue that comes along with it. And that entails this principle of mediocrity. You know, and that undermines the biblical worldview in fundamental ways. So a lot of people without knowing it, by accepting belief in aliens and, and other planets and you know, UFOs or, or aliens visiting Earth, you know, just by accepting those things without thinking critically about what comes along with it, they've accepted all these fundamental beliefs that, that build that worldview. They've accepted the principle of mediocrity uh, without really critically analyzing that. So I, I wanted you to be aware of that and to think through these issues and how they undermine the biblical worldview. Um, now, scientists also know something called the anthropic principle, and that's really the idea that the constants of nature that the science observe, like the strong nuclear force that holds protons and neutrons together in an atom. Now, if that was off by a minuscule amount, I mean like a thousandth of a percentage, if that was changed, then atoms would not hold together and life would be impossible. We would not exist. So this is the idea that the constants of nature are finely tuned, okay? But it's not just one, it's, it's hundreds of them. They're finely tuned to very exacting amounts. Now, this really shows that our reality, our, our physical world, um, the air we breathe, the atoms that make up everything, were, are designed with a really high uh, degree of engineering. Uh, if things were changed just a small bit, then reality as we know it could not exist. Now, you know, the idea that this sort of randomly happened by accident um, just is incoherent to me. And, you know, most scientists are aware of this and they avoid it. But it's called the anthropic principle, and I wanted you to be aware of that. So the idea that life is not special, that the earth is not special, these ideas are, are, are really kind of lunacy. Um, when you really look into what it takes for life to exist, just really for atoms to exist, for, for matter to exist. These things are, are, are finely tuned to a high degree. So we really see uh, the handiwork of a supernatural creator very clearly from what has been made. So men are without excuse.